takes the snap, so Brown hits the quarterback. Weekly recap, peak performer of the week, movie lines, Bellasino's player of the week, Stump the Krieg, IGA top five, and pigskin prognostications, all this and more on episode 5.4. You're watching After the Whistle. Gentlemen, my name is Brian Moore. Welcome to the show. How are you, Coach? I'm Dicker? good. I'm good. Good. Good to go. Good to go. Sounds like we're doing good, according to you, fellas. Anyway, on the cameraman for now. Yeah. And Pistol, how are you? I understand Pistol has we'll a have some case of carpal tunnel going on over there, so he's on the IR right now, and uh, he's managing to pull it off, though. Too much. Yeah, he he pull it pulled off, it so. off all right. That's why he's got carpal tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I plead the fifth. I'm not saying anything on that. Daddy. Where's that Twin Valley helmet at, anyway? It's over here. It's in the backpack. It's behind oh, the backpack. Oh, that could be used two ways. Tug battle. I got, hey, boys, somebody told me they might know what's in the backpack at you. Oh, really? I mean, at that team. Their, that their backpack? Yes. You want to? No, I'm not going to tell it yet. <laughs> okay. Well, is this a teaser for later on in the show, maybe? Yes. All right, folks. I can't wait to find out. I know you're excited about it. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, let's get after it. Uh, three, uh, excuse me, five minutes here. We're going to try to knock out the uh, weekly recap from this past week. So we're going to fly through these scores. And uh, here we go, fellas. Uh, Virginia High 38, Y Central 35. Brody Jones, six-yard touchdown in overtime for the dub. Uh, big win for Virginia High and a very exciting game. Good game. Everybody said it come down to the wire last. Thank you, but I picked Wise, didn't I? I think you did, yep. Uh, <laughs> Graham 17, <laughs> Union 8. Let's talk about Ooh. this one real quick. Ty Drez Clements with two first half touchdowns uh, gave Graham the, the lead and the edge, and the they managed to hang on. Guys, boys, they look. Y'all don't understand. Games like this, when there's like, what was it, 17 to 8? Graham's looking ahead. I mean, they're, you know how you are as a coach when you practice, but you're practicing for somebody you else. Moving the ball on them really well. Well, you want me to go ahead and tell you what I was told that was in the backpack? What's in it? They said there's a y lot of yellow flags in it. Oh, really? Said that's how the game got kept close. Oh, man. Mm. Said the yellow flags were just laying all over the field. So they're thinking they come from the backpacks. Well, now I don't know. I, I just I'm going by what so people say. That's so what uh, what's it called when it's out there? Uh, what's it called in the paper when you write the gossip thing or? So Union would have won if it wasn't for the flags. Right? No, Union Graham would have won by forty if it wasn't for the flags. <laughs> is, is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, just what I was told. I didn't go to the game. I don't know. All right. Well, that's a, a conspiracy theory. Then. That's a conspiracy theory. All right. Up next, Abingdon 21, Big R 0. Big R had 94 yards total offense. Man, Three turnovers. I picked Big R, didn't I? You sure did. Uh, Abingdon gets back in the win column there. The woes continue for Big R's offense. Homemaker 55, Eastside 29, Jax Horn had 125 yards rushing. I didn't rushing. pick Eastside, I know Three that. Three carries, that was close, three carries. Close for a minute, they said. Had well, you know, Spartans fall at 0-4. I watched the game up to about halftime. It was it was close. Second half, Homemaker just pulled away. Uh, big uh, big win for Grundy to get in the win column. Grundy 62, Castlewood 6, Ian Scammell 183 yards rushing. Uh, Grundy uh, offensively had 356 yards, Castlewood's. 69 offense uh, offensive yards uh, not a good performance for, for Castlewood Gate City 35 Marion 28 JB Carroll hauled in a 73 yard uh, touchdown pass from Reed Osborne with about seven minutes oh, left to the game. I can't get the scores, man. Man. That's right. Marion just Lost got beat by Northwood. Six right? to nothing. Yeah. Marion, Gate City just barely beats Marion. I can't figure them out. 
Well, and then Gate C went in and beat Abby. Like it's all that. about matchups. It's all about matchups. <laughs> That's what it is. It's all about matchups. Yeah, nobody matches up with the big G. Okay. Men. <laughs> Men, all right. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, the other thriller over in the Cumberland District, uh, Ryko picks up its first Cumberland District win since 2018 with a 30-28 win over Tom Walker. Uh, that's another one that's puzzling. doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, Thomas Walker beats Honeyker. Yeah, uh, uh, Landon Jesse oh, to Luke Jesse in double overtime to tie the game, and then uh, he threw Did I make uh, that up? Yeah, you made that one up. Uh, and then he also threw a two-point conversion to Jay Bowen and – uh, Rykov uh, squeaks. Oh, Thomas uh, Hawker beat Castlewood. Castle, That's what. Castlewood. And then Castlewood almost beat Tonaker. That's where I'm getting it. It's uh, a lot of, uh, I don't know if you call it parody or what, but it's uh, it's strange. Big win. Uh, the Cove now is undefeated at 4 0. B.I. Salyers and Collier, or uh, <clears throat> is Collier. it? And Collier and Company, boys. All right, moving on. Uh, J.I. Burton 51, Twin Springs 16. Uh, the 72 J.I. Burton state champs uh, were present and honored uh, during this football game, and this bunch didn't let them down, and especially our man Trey Keys had 235 yards rushing and five touchdowns uh, for Burton in the win. A uh, little bit of a surprise for me. I, I thought that game would have been a little bit tighter. Who was it? I missed it. Trey Keys. Burton and Twin Springs. Oh, no. I picked, and uh, happy birthday to Coach Cottle from Burton. Norton, I mean. <laughs> All right. Uh, George with 55, Carroll County 32. Uh, Leighton Houston had nine receptions for 191 yards and one touchdown uh, in the win. Lebanon over Chilhowee 35 to 7. Pioneer scored 28 points in the third quarter and took a game that was tight and blew it wide open. Chilhowee now 0 and 4 on the season. Uh, Lehigh, 41, PH 20. You talked about Boys, the I'm telling ball. you, I've said it from week one. What have I said? That they've got a kid good play a quarterback that's pretty daggone good as a freshman. And it's showing. That now, does that did? shock me that they beat PH? Yeah. Yes, it does. Because it's hard as a freshman to come in and play, and he's playing. I mean, that's a big win right there. Yeah, that's a uh, two game win. And I know they're double, people say they're double A, and it doesn't matter. PH, I mean, it, the, the score shocked me, especially how bad it was. I said, but, boys, I'm telling you, from day one, the Pendergraft kid's going to be real good. Yeah, right. They play Ridgeview pretty tight this week. Oh, Lehigh, 41, PH 20. Uh, PH kind of hitting some roadblocks here the last few weeks. Hurley, 52, Riverview, West Virginia, 26. Landon Bailey, 181 yards, rushing two touchdowns. Peyton Hurley and Kevin Looney also added two scores for the Rebels in the win there and cross state rivals and then Tazewell 39 John Battle 16 uh, dogs put it away in the fourth battle was game uh, kept fighting coming back Cassius Harris nine receptions for 38 yards uh, tells me that uh, yards after catch that battle did a pretty good job of containing him right I think battles gonna win a few games in, in this year I think they're gonna win one or two in the mountain seven that nobody's expecting all right well that takes care of our die. Weekly recap brought to you by Buchanan Therapy Services. Up next, we have our Peak Performer of the Week. Peak Performer of the Week brought to you by True Point Bank. And this week's tr uh, Peak Performer of the Week is Trey Keys uh, from J.I. Burton, 235 yards rushing and five touchdowns. Uh, in the win this so week. I figured you'd still give it to that union running back well, that you've been talked to uh, for the past three weeks on the same, ready, same game. I was getting ready to give him an honorable mention. <laughs> you beat me to it. So I'm going to give uh, Rayshon honorable yeah, mention. Yeah, so give, you give him something every week. All right. From the same ball game, and the stats are the same from that one game. Well, they don't change. <laughs> they ain't going to change. All right, uh, so once again, our True Point Bank Peak Performer of the Week, Trey Keys from J.I. Burton. All right, uh, up next we have our famous movie lines, and uh, congrat we would like to first of all congratulate Alex Tabor, or Tabor, uh, sorry about the pronunciation, but he was the winner of our Who Said It Last Week, which was Jack Nicholson uh, in the, um, you wanna add it? The Few Good Men. The Few Good Men, okay. Uh, Jack Nicholson's uh, comment, and he has been entered in uh, to our drawing as well. Now, remember, folks, you can win this. Be, you can get your name thrown in multiple times. How you win? My dad called and answered. He said Jack Compton. Jack, well, he's close. 
Wrong chat here. You all you gotta do is go to our Facebook page. It has to be on the link where we post the new up, uh, episode, and just go down there in the comment section and, and put the info and the answer, Subscribe. and you'll be entered to win a pizza drawing. So, so far, we've got two names in there. Those two names are still eligible. They could win again next week and have their name put in a second or a third time. So competition starting to get tight. People are uh, starting to respond and just barely miss the cut. So as soon as we post it, you have an opportunity. All right, this week's quote is also a famous movie quote. Uh, and the quote is, what we have here is failure to communicate. Who said it? In the comment section, put it. What we have here is failure to communicate. Jack Compton's got that on his answer machine. <laughs> he does. That's what I've heard. He does. That. Yeah. I've heard that. I've heard that. Uh, All right. Up next, we have our Bellasinos Player of the Week. This week's Bellasinos Player of the Week is from Grundy High School. Let's take a look at Mr. Ian Scammell. All right, guys, we're here with our Bellasinos Player of the Week, Mr. Ian Scammell from Grundy High School. He had 183 yards and three touchdowns on seven carries this week against the Castlewood Blue Devils. Um, Mr. Scammell, talk a little bit about the game. Y'all got off to a quick start and just kept it rolling. Oh, uh, yeah, we, you know, uh, start of the game, we got out uh, line blocking good. All the backs were clicking. We were able to get that first drive. And then after that one, we just kind of kept it rolling and got up to a good lead. Good deal, man. It's a good game, but it seemed like it's a good team effort by everybody. Uh, talk a little bit about this week. I know you got a big game this week against Homeacre, and talk a little bit about what you got to do to bring that one home. Uh, we're real excited. I mean, last year left a pretty bad taste in our mouth going over there, and we're all pretty fired up, and we just got to go into the game, click on all cylinders again, and just play like we can. Absolutely. All right, guys, you heard it from Mr. Ann Scammell here, the player of the week, uh, on seven carries, 183 yards, and good luck to you this week, Mr. Scammell. Ready? All right, congratulations, yeah, Mr. Mine. Ian Scammell, our uh, Bellasinos Player of the Week, brought to you by Bellasinos Pizza in Grundy, Virginia. All right, folks, it's that time of the week where we try to once again stump the Krig, and uh, I have right here uh, sitting in front of me a hermetically sealed envelope, and inside that envelope uh, we have a question. And here's what we're going to do. This hermetically sealed envelope has been under the eye of watchful security for the last seven days in a True Point Bank vault, one of their branch locations. And it was recently delivered here at Bellasinos by an armored truck and an armed guard. Um, I have not seen the contents of this envelope, and neither has he. And the way this works is he's going to tell me the answer to the question that's inside the envelope before I read the question. That's just how good he is. So, all right, up first, uh, Coach Krieger. Uh, I know the answer. I got it right here. Hold on. Uh, you've got a backpack. Stick. Stick. Final answer. Final answer. It's easy. Since I've got my backpack, I, I think a lot more clearly. Do you have yellow flags in your backpack? Uh, no. Okay. No, just, I don't. Just checking. Yours didn't come with them. No, mine did not come with it. So, they was probably planted. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, the final answer is stick. And the question is, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? <laughs> a stick. Uh, that's what me and OP play with all the time, a stick. We just me and Maui plays with it. Sometimes she'll just look and let it lay there. Let it there. You go you, get it. That's right. And then I'm it. fetching myself. <laughs> throw and fetch your own stick. Yeah. All right, a stick. Well, I guess it is. A boomerang don't come back is a stick, eh? No, it don't come back. <laughs> I've been running with boomerangs. I couldn't get them to come back. Yeah. So I guess I just throw a stick. I've, I've had a few thrown. Oh, back. yeah. I have. Yeah. Hit me right in the head. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time I've failed. All right, so question number one. He got it correct, all right? I now have here in my hand the second envelope. And uh, do you need to do your osmosis thing? No, no, thing? Buddy, I got it. It was right here. Negative. Negative what? Negative. Negative you don't need the paper? Or? Negative is the answer. Oh, negative is the answer to the question. Alright. Final answer. Negative. And the question is, 
the results of Krigger's IQ test. <laughs> negative. I get it. So your IQ test came back negative. <laughs> uh, well, what do you have to say about that? I got it right. <laughs> well, you did. You got that right. Yeah, so it must be a high IQ negative test. Right, well, all right, folks. Well, there we have it. Uh, uh, two for two. Once again, we have failed to stump the Krig. Um, as we have for five seasons now. We'll try it again next week. Up next, we have our top five uh, brought to you by, let's see, Wooden Horse Grill. Yeah, top five brought to you by Wooden Horse Grill. Used to be brought to you by the Hurley IGA, which is right down the street from the Hurley Meat Market. And boys, <laughs> you can't beat Hurley Virginia's meat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so much with that. All right, so we're going to talk the about pistol our, might be able to We're going to talk about our top he got, five. He taped up like he could. All right, uh, so let's take a look at our top five, uh, and uh, we'll start things out with one A. And if you would, uh, Coach Tester, we'll let you start things out here. Coach Tester, uh, who do you have at 1A Top 5? All right. Well, my 1A coming in at number 5 is the War Eagles. Ryko War Eagles. Are they the War Eagles? We're calling them, we're <laughs> calling them War Eagles. <laughs> All right. I think Ryko 4-0, 5-0. 4-0. First uh, 4-0 start since I've seen them. ATW is calling them the War Eagles. So, good. congrats to Ryko, top five. Number four is the John I. Burton Raiders coming in number four. Number three, I still, uh, Mr. Pageant's Patrick Henry Rebels slid back to number three. I got the Grundy Golden Wave going back to the two spot at one and two. I still think they're in the mix, right? So. And the end. You still got it. And number one is still Rural Retreat. That's right. <laughs> that's pretty good job right there. Yeah. So, that's my top five and one A. Number two A top five. Yeah, I think if we go cross, oh, okay. come back. Uh, yeah. Get, man, get ahead of yourself here. That, that was a premature prognostication, though. Premature. What was, I ain't going to say that. Yeah. All right. Anyhow, my one A top five. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, number five, I got the Burton Raiders. Coming in at number five, looking a little bit more impressive than I thought before. Uh, PH slid back a little bit with a couple losses. I got them at number four. I got the Ryko War Eagles coming in at number three. Number two, Rural Retreat. <laughs> and number one, uh, with, the, with the game last week, I think they're, they're going to settle back into the groove. I got the Grundy Golden Wave coming in at number one. What about your top five? Uh, my top five bulls is very simple. Very simple. I got the War Eagles. Or I got Honeacre at number five. I got the Ryko War Eagles at number four. I mean, storming to the top. Storming. I've got the Patrick Henry Rebels at number three. I got the Rural Tree Engines at number two, just because my old buddy. I don't want to put no more pressure on him. Jimmy Hughes. Yeah, Jamie Hughes. <laughs> but at number one, with the big win on Friday, offensive outburst, the mighty wave of grunty golden wave. All right. Number one, boy. Right, you want to start us out with 2A? Yeah, 2A. That's easy. I mean, I guarantee a team that over close to Wise ain't on it. So, but Wise is. At number five, why Central Warriors with a little letdown this week. Well, more than the letdowns, I'm going to have to put battle in there. So, <laughs> and I hope that wise don't let me down. All right. Number four, I've got the Bull Puppies. They're playing pretty good ball right now. All right. At number three, I've got the Gate City Blue Devils boys. They're playing a little back bit. to back dubs. Yep. Back to back dubs. At number two, I got the <laughs> the Wolf Pack. Oh, okay. <laughs> the Wolf Pack at number two, and at number one, are they any doubt in Southwest Virginia? Who the best team in the area is? Is the Graham G 
Me. Is that West Virginia? Both. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's a pretty good top five right there. We're going to take a look at mine real quick. Uh, coming in, number five for me, I've got the Tazewell Bulldogs. Number five. Number four, I've got the Gate City Blue Devils. That's a new entry for me. Number three, with the loss, they've slid back to number three, the Union Bears. And number two, I've got the Ridgeview Wolfpack. And coming in at number one, I've got the Graham G-Men rounding things out. Right, what about you, Coach? All right, my top five is number five is Virginia High this week, creeping in after the overtime mm -hmm. win over Central. Good. Number four is the Bull Puppies, as Krieger says, of Tazewell. Coming in at number four, I think Tazewell's a tough out right now in 2A Southwest mm -hmm. District. Uh, number three, I still got the Wolfpack riding at number three. Number two is the Union Bears coming in at number two. Uh, number one, without a doubt, is Tony Pompers, Graham G. Man. All right. And my top in 3A in Southwest Virginia, number one, Abingdon. <laughs> <laughs> good job right there. Uh, we should, our top 3A, that's a good one. Yeah. We need to have that one, that one. They can win that week in and week out. That's right. Uh, all right. Uh, well, that takes care of our top five, brought to you by the Wooden Horse Grill over in Hurley, Virginia. Check it out. Food's so good, make your tongue want to slap your brains out. All right, folks, it's time for our pigskin prognostications. That's where we pick the games. We tell you who's going to win before the games are ever played with incredible accuracy. Last week, I was 14-4. and four. Tester, you were 11-7 and seven last week. Krieger, 12-5. Overall, I'm you're still leading winning. 37 and 12. Tester 34 and 16, and I am 36 and 14. I'm going to quit trying to make it fun. I'm just going to pick. You're going to have to go for it. Yeah, Whatever. The competitive nature is coming out in him. All right. Hopefully, he doesn't jump down the floor and start doing push ups. Because if he does, we probably won't win, will we? Oh, no, no. He's the master <laughs> about it. He is the All master. All right. All right, let's run through these real quick. A couple of them we'll talk. Most of them we'll just run through them. Tennessee High at Abingdon. Tennessee High. I got Tennessee High. What about you, Coach Tester? I'm going to go with Tennessee High. All right. <laughs> Tennessee High across the board. That is a gold star. Lock. Lock. Right there, folks. Up next, this is a big one. Union at Gate City. This could be a really good game. The fact that it's at uh, uh, Gate City. I'm going to go with... I'm going to give Union the edge in this one right here. Union. Considering what's the in Bears. the backpacks of that team, I'm going to take that team. That team? Yeah. That team. I'll involve Lock Gate City. Okay. I'm going to take the other team. All right. We'll cross the board. We've got Union, Union, and the other team. not Gate, Gate City. City. Okay. So that would be a gold star. Well, master Lock. Master Lock. All right. Up next, this game I think is going to be a good one. PH. At battle, I give PH the edge in the run game. I think battle's getting feisty. They're starting to show some signs of life. Um, I'm going to go. I'll start this one out. I'm going to go with PH in a close one. PH. PH. I'm going with Paget and the Berkster. All right. PH across the board. That too is a gold star lock. Uh, Ridgeview at Lee. Start you out there, Coach. This could be a trick game. It's one of them trick games, man. I, I want to pick a lead, but I just can't do it. I'm going to go with the Wolfpack. Um, I think they pull it out. I think the passing game will be a little bit too much for them, but I think Lee's going to be game in the fact that Ridgeview's on the road, but I'm going to go with them as well. I'm just going with Ridgeview just because experience. Oak wins a lot of junior. I'm not sure about that. Maybe a sophomore. A sophomore. <laughs> sophomore. A lot of experience there. A lot of, well, but he's, yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of in head. Get looking I'm going to see him. I think Lee is coming. Like I said, with the quarterback they got, I guess they, they got some good people around him, but I'm going to go with uh, Ridgeview here. Close one. All right. That's kind of a surprise calling it a close one. Across the board, it's a gold star. All right. Galax at Graham. We'll start that one with you. Speed versus speed. Galax where? at where? Graham. Wait, Graham. Graham. Well, I know we got to pick them. Yeah. I'm gonna put a G here. Does that matter? Yeah. G beard. 
Uh, I'm going with Graham as well in this one. I just don't think Galax has got what it takes to hang with him. No, I don't want to. I'm going to stay G. with the G-Man. That's a good game for Galax, though. I think it is, too. That's a great pick up there. I think it is. Uh, all right, up next, uh, this is going to be a good rivalry game. Marion at Grayson County. No. Nope. Um, I think Grayson County, you got yeah, Grayson County? Well, we say that, but we don't know what Mary team's going to show up. Well, that's true, too. I think Grayson County, based on you know, based on what they did with Carroll County and stuff, I'm going to go with them. They beat them. Roll or trick pretty good. Too. Yeah, they beat them handily. Uh, and so I'm going to go with Grayson. That's a little bit of a uh, I'm going homecoming Grayson. type situation there for Stephen James. Used to be the defensive coordinator in Mary and now the head coach of Grayson. So he probably knows a lot of people over there. You got uh, Grayson. Grayson as well. All right. Uh, next, we've got Bluefield at Richland. So I think Bluefield's going to get off their slide here. Who? Bluefield. At Big R. At the Big R. Yeah. I'm going with the Big B. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bluefield across the board. That's another go for it. Oh, I thought you said B. No, uh, who you got there? <laughs> <laughs> like I had that. Uh, Dazzle at Riverheads, and before saying anything, Riverheads was one game away from having that state record. And, and bottom Jamie top. Jamie Harless put them down. away, baby. Sure did. I wouldn't have picked up bottom. I would top. hate I to be. Record. I'd hate to be on the other sideline after that, because you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna be pissed, boys. They're gonna be coming after them. What do you think here? Uh, I'm gonna go with the heads on this, Riverheads. What about you? <laughs> I'm going with the heads. <laughs> All right, it looks like the heads have got it here. Then across the board, that's another gold star lock. So far, every game, boys, we can't miss. We've got them all right so far, according to uh, three for three. Virginia High at Lebanon. I think Daryl's gonna have his bunch ready, Coach Taylor. Uh, I think in the end, they're just not going to have enough to handle the speed. <laughs> I'm going to go with Virginia High in this one. Uh, with what Virginia High did to Patrick Henry, I'm going with Virginia I'm High. I'm impressed with Lebanon, but I just still think they're... Just a young. I mean, yeah, they're going to have a good quarterback, quarterback coming up. I mean, he just, I mean... Boys, you know, it's the time you play East Freshman. Back in the day, you had to be pretty yeah. daggone good to get on the field. Freshman. Not saying the dude's not good, but when you get thrown in there, I mean, it's totally different. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, another big one now that's kind of throw Giles kind of threw things in the limbo last week. Giles at Fort Chisholm. I'm going with Giles. All right, I'm going with Giles. Now, boys, I'm going to take the Fort in this one. Uh, oh, that ain't no... Master Lock. That's not a lock. So that's the first one we disagree on. All right, George with at War Tree. I'm going with the double R, boys. Well, I think it's, it's test time right here. You got GW. I got GW. And you got the double R. Double R. I'm going to go with double R as well. Uh, catch back the up. fact that it's in their house. And so now it's put up or shut up time. It's time for them to show what they're All made right. of. Are they worthy? Tug Valley, West Virginia, Rebels. at Hurley. Um, boys, I tell you what, I think Tug Valley's just a little bit too highly ranked in West Virginia. Uh, and so I'm going to... They're ranked number two. they got a good football team. I'm going to go I mean, with them. You, can, you don't... I mean, you can. I'll take Hurley. Yeah. Y'all scared? Y'all scared? Say you scared. <laughs> I ain't scared. Well, I'm not taking them. So... I'm not taking them. If you taking him, then you got the other team. <laughs> oh, my. I'll take TV. All right. Ryko at Castlewood. War Eagles are going into War Mustard Eagles Biscuit. War Eagles will be 5-0. and oh. Mustard Biscuit country. I think the War Eagles come in, steal the Mustard Biscuits, take them back home, and leave the Blue Devils cry. What do you say? I'm going to War Eagles. I'm going to War Eagles. Well, I'm telling you, they they're rolling, man. They're rolling, rolling. I'm, I'm they just keep the ball, ball from right here. No ball. I just think they keep the ball from them. I'm not saying I'm going with bubble ball right here. Let's right. go. Going with the beer. Going with the mustard biscuits and beer, boy. Uh, that's interesting because you know if you can if you can affect if they can't defend the pass, they're in trouble. Yeah. All right, up next we got Claiborne, Tennessee, at Tom Walker. 
This is a game Tom Walker traditionally is able to hang in there and play and win. I'm going to go with Tom Walker in this one. I'm going with Tommy Walker. Tom Walker. Not that. Get them Ws, Tom get Walker, points. that's across the board there. That's a gold star lock. All right, folks. Northwood at Tehide. The championship of Smith County is on the line if Northwood wins this Who game. Who won the Marion Tehide game? Marion did. 30, and, and Northwood has a win, a right, Northwood can win the Smith County title outright with Chihai. a win. All right, this game is at Chill House. I'm Chihai. going to Robinson. Okay. What's up? Oh, boys, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen here. Northwood is going to Chill Howie, and you're going to be able to hear them going back to Saltville, a yell and a holler, and I'll wait on that bus back. Northwood will win it first time in a long time. Smith County champs. All right, that's take that to the bank. They get a trophy. No, they don't get one. They get bragging rights for a whole year. Holston at Eastside. Oh, Eastside, boys. Holston. Eastside 0-4. Eastside you got Holston, Trigger? Yes. What about you, Coach? I think I'm going with Holston on this one. I'm going to stick with you. I'll go with Holston. That's a gold star right there. Gold oh. star lock. All right, folks. I've got two more games. Guys, two big ones. West Virginia at Tech. West Virginia. Bullseye, I'm it pains me to do I know. It pains me to do I'm this. going. But I'm going to play in this game to win. I'm going with Tech. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going West Virginia. Who you got? I'll be there. <laughs> so I've got West Virginia. Who do you? Country roads take me home <laughs> to a place I belong. West, West Virginia, Mountain Mama, Mama. Keep it going, man. take me home. <laughs> but the only reason I am is because of Daniels. The quarterback to transfer from Georgia to West Virginia will be the difference maker. All right, now, you know it's hard to go into Lane Stadium on a Thursday night on a primetime game. Oh, it's going to be electric. I mean, Unless if you're Old Dominion, Wofford. <laughs> the next week, or the next game, give me this one. Well, no. I got a rope. All right, here we go. We got this one more. Can you get this one? Yeah. All right, last one on the list here. Florida at Tennessee, boys. Them volunteer fans are talking this one up. Gators. Gators. <laughs> Absolutely, baby. UT big. UT big by two touchdowns. Uh, boys, their offense is too good, too fast. Playing in Rocky he Top Land. Me. Rocky Top Land. Hooker's good, boys. Couldn't play for Tech. I'm going, yeah. He couldn't <laughs> couldn't play. play for Tech. Uh, he's the best quarterback in the country up there with him. So you sure with the Gators? Sure with the Gators. All right, UT, UT, Gators. All right, that's our picks. Uh, that's all we've got for this week. You got One anything? One more game. Hold on, we got pistols trying to well, sign language. Just one in here. Just these two. Yeah. Boys, it wasn't on the list. <laughs> Grindy Holmaker, game of the week. How'd you leave out? Ah, it's the game of the week. Oh, oh, I got you. <laughs> yeah, it's game of the week. All right. So who we got? Oh, sticking with Grindy on this. Mighty Wave. Mighty Wave. Boys, I think I think he's gonna have a tough time containing. Scott. After Coach Tester went out there and grabbed Ian by his. Arms and stuff. Yeah. I think it's going mighty wave. All right, I'm going with the wave as well. So across the board, we've all got grid. Thank right. you, Pistol. And this could uh, this could ultimately determine the BDD championship, yes. as, as always. All right, folks, that's all I've got. Uh, you guys got anything? I do. Yes, sir. I got this one, guys. If you can answer, what's an alligator in a vest called? An alligator. In a best? In a best call. What is an alligator in a best call? All right. Post it on our subscribe to us. You got to tell them what last week's was. Oh, the uh, three give me a three letter word that starts with gas. The answer was car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more time. He's going to give you his uh, riddle for the next one. What's week. an alligator in a best call? All right, give you something to think about for a week here. All right, I don't think it take you that long, but it might take me. I'll see if I can figure this one out without the cheating. <laughs> All right, until next time, I'm Coach Moore. Coach Tester. Coach Gregor. Minding you that just because you're not paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. Good day. <laughs>